Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be filming my 3 demo look and review on the Jaclyn Hill Bling Boss Eyeshadow Palette. This is the last palette that I am reviewing from her Vault Collection. I have been through them all and this is the last and final one. It's been so much fun just going through all the palettes, playing with different color schemes and just creating 3 demo looks because I truly, truly do enjoy filming this for you guys. And hopefully you guys have been enjoying the Vault Collection collection videos and found them helpful. I am like ready to move on. I got my Colourpop 4 collection, I got my Norvina palette to do and then the Disney collection is on its way so I am just ready to move on from Morphe. That's all I've been playing with for like the past month or so. I don't know if you guys noticed but in every single video, whatever the colour scheme of the palette was, I painted my nails the same color as the palette so you can see my nails are purple dark magic it was black i'm um, gorgeous it was like brown and for ring the alarm it was red i don't know if anybody picked that up it's a very small detail i was very very dedicated to this vault collection but without a further ado if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts seeing comparisons and seeing three looks for this one palette then just continue watching okay so like always i'm just going to give you a little bit of product info just in case this is the only video you are seeing for my vault collection reviews so you can get the whole vault for 49 US dollars and that converts to 75 Australian dollars you can buy the palettes individually and if you want to do that they are 15 US dollars and that converts to 23 Australian dollars each palette comes with 10 eyeshadows and a mirror as well we have six metallics and four mattes and out of all the palettes this is the palette that has the least mattes all the other mattes are like five mattes six mattes seven mattes and less shimmers and just to kind of speed you guys up to today, long story short, I did get a good vault collection. You guys might know that there was a little bit of drama with people getting bad palettes, but I personally got all good palettes playing with all four palettes. I found that there was nothing wrong with my palettes. I think the formula is pretty similar to the original palette. I didn't have any issues with that. I personally love the original formula, so therefore I love the vault formula as well. I just don't want to sound too repetitive, but I honestly don't know who is coming into these videos I just want to make sure everyone's like on the same page as me but yeah I got good palettes so when I'm reviewing these eyeshadow palettes I'm really reviewing just the shade selections how they perform and the variety of looks you can get out of one palette so with formula being set aside let's talk about the shade range already this palette was at a disadvantage for me because there are less mattes and I always talk about having more mattes than shimmers but this palette is not too bad because the mattes you get in here are the mattes that you will need so what I consider the mattes you need is a transition shade, two medium shades, and then one dark shade. So I got our transition here, two medium shades, and then one dark shade. I also think Buried Treasure could be like another matte as well because if you guys are familiar with my channel and my taste in eyeshadows, if you watch a lot of my ColourPop reviews, I have a thing with this kind of formula of eyeshadows. Buried Treasure is like a matte base, but it has a crap ton of glitters in there. It looks stunning. It looks beautiful when swatched. I don't know if it's just me and I'm not skilled enough to work with this kind of shadow, but honestly, when you put this shadow on your eyes, like you will see the glitter, but once you go into blend, you kind of dust off all that glitter and it just ends up being like a matte shadow. So to me, I just like personally find it pointless to put the glitter in. So to me, in the way I work, there's technically five mattes because to me that one I don't consider it to be a satin or a shimmer, it's just a matte because when it's on my eyes, it's a matte and you guys will see in the demos in demo 2 that it just disappears. For me, this was like the least exciting one. I guess maybe that's why I kept it till last. When I was creating my looks, you will see that all of them look like, you know, fairly the same. You can tell that all the looks came from one palette. But I felt like when I was playing with all other three palettes, each look didn't look like it was from the same palette. For example, my Dark Magic one, the one that just went out recently, one look was like very cool tone. One look had like blues in it and then one look was full on green. It was just such a variety. They looked all different, you know what I mean? But when you are using Bling Boss, I think just the tones and the fact that you have to use the same transition shade. You have to use the same medium shade. The base of it is going to be very, very similar. There is no variety in that and you can see through the three looks, all the three looks like, oh, you can tell that's from one palette. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but hopefully you guys get what I mean. I'm just trying to explain the variety of looks you can get. They are going to look 
fairly similar. Another disappointing thing about it was just the shades in here, I didn't find to be like that unique. A lot of these shades like I have seen before from other palettes. All the other palettes, especially Dark Magic and Armed and Gorgeous, I think those two palettes have very, very unique shades. Like I really don't have anything similar to that in my collection from Colourpop from anyone. So that made it more special to me. Looking at this palette, the first color that is the most unique is obviously Gem. But there is a very similar color in the original Jaclyn Hill palette which I will compare. And when it's swatched, they look very different. But once it's on the eyes, I think it looks very similar. If you watch my 3 demo look for the original Jaclyn Hill palette, I did a very similar look to this where I used the purple as kind of like my blending shade. It looks very, very, very similar. I think Ballsy is a little bit more unique. I definitely haven't seen a shadow like this. But to me, it's not really anything special. You know, like it's just, yeah, it's pretty, but it doesn't scream to me. So to me, probably the most unique shade is Rockstar because I don't have like a true purple in my collection and when it's swatched, it does look just like, oh, it's just your regular deep mauvey plum. When it's on the eyes, it really pulls to like a true purple and I was really shocked at the pigment like and you guys will see my reaction in the three demo looks. All in all, I... I don't know, I just feel like I wouldn't recommend this palette to everyone. I don't know what's in your collection, but in my collection I have a crap ton of these kind of shades and I feel like I could have done out this palette. Like don't get me wrong, I loved all the looks that I created. They were very fun and I love the purples, but I think I could have done it with palettes that I already have. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the shade range and the formula and like my little review on the actual palette. I think just comparing it to everything else from the vault, it's like the least exciting one to me. That is just like my quick little review on Bling Boss. Now we can talk about some comparisons. So the first color I'm going to compare is Bling Bling from the Bling Boss palette and the shade I'll be comparing it to from the original palette is on the first row and it's the fifth shade. So to me these kind of have like a similar undertone. I feel like the one from the original palette is just like the lighter version of it. Bling Bling is a lot more darker and a little bit more pink. I think they just have that same like silver base. One's just a little bit lighter than the other. And next up I'll be comparing Gem from Bling Boss and obviously the shade we're going to be comparing it from the original Jaclyn Hill palette is on the fourth row and it's the first shade and when you look at these side by side you'll see the one from the original Jaclyn Hill palette is much much darker and the one from Bling Boss is a lot more brighter and it's more of like a true purple and then next up I want to compare Pizzazz I think that's how you say it and I'm going to compare it to the shade on the third row and it's the last color on the third row and to me these look almost like identical. The one from the original Jaclyn Hill palette is a little bit more metallic and a little bit more like red. Pizzazz is a little bit more like has like a tint of berry in it. On the eyes you definitely could not even like tell a difference. And then lastly I want to compare Glitz and Glam from the Bling Boss palette and I'm going to be comparing it to the shade on the third row and it's the second color. So this one was like the closest I guess comparable shade I could find from the original palette. They had that same kind of champagne rose gold base. The one from the original Jaclyn Hill palette is just like a darker version of it like an older sister if you want to say. Okay so that was all the comparisons that I had for Bling Boss. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. But before we move on to the swatches and demos, I want to give you my ranking for the Vault Collection and which palettes I love the most and which one's my least favorite. I'm just kind of ranking overall which palette would I use the most in my everyday life and which palettes have like unique colors just all around. I'm gonna rank it like that. So for first place, I was torn between two, but I'm gonna have to go with Ring the Alarm just because I think this is the most wearable palette for me personally. It was between Ring the Alarm and Arm and Gorgeous. For everyone, this is probably the most wearable, just like for even daytime. It's the most safe palette. And for second place, I have Arm and Gorgeous. I think this palette you can also use for every day. I think the transition shades just like pop that in your crease, add some mascara, you're out the door, easy as that. But I think just the transition shades, it's like a little bit 
bright like a bit too orangey personally for me on my skin tone for every day I really do love the color scheme in this palette I love how all the shades are just so cohesive with one another and then we have dark magic a lot of these shades are just stunning dark shades that I don't have in my collection therefore it's number three and then I think you guys could tell from this review that bling boss was my least favorite it was just the most underwhelming I think it was the most like boring palette of them all just overall I loved all the palettes and I had fun creating my 12 looks in total for this one collection. If you guys did pick up the vault for yourself, let me know which palette was your favorite and which one was your least favorite. Are we in the same order? Let me know, I would love to hear it. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I gave you my rankings and my review, my comparisons. So now we can move along to the swatches and the three demos. So first, I'm going to take the shade Hush Hush, and this is going to be our transition shade. I'm putting that straight into our crease using windshield wiping motion, blending that towards up to my brow bone. Taking the shade Sparks, this is going right into the outer corner of our eyes using circular motions to stamp that on first and then slowly blend that up towards the transition shade. What is ever left on my brush without dipping further into the shadow, I'll bring that towards the inner part of my crease. Using the shade Mystic, we are going to be using this shade exactly how we use a spark, just putting it right in that outer corner first and then bringing it towards the inner part of our crease. We're just using a smaller brush, that way the shadow will pack on a little bit darker and we can start creating that depth. And now taking the shade Possess is going in the inner third of our lid space. I did use the shade Wet to get the maximum high shine metallicness of the shadow. As you can see, I am not being very precise with it. I wanna make the edges very smoky and just blend it into each other. I'm gonna use the shade Ballsy. I'm also using the shade Wet as well, but I'm just putting that right on top of Pizzazz just to give the shadow a little bit more dimension. Going back in with Sparks, I'm gonna run this on my lower lash line from outer to inner corner, really smoking that down. And then taking the shade Mystic, I'm just going to use this to define my bottom waterline. I'm also going to take a little pencil brush just to connect it with the shadows in that outer corner to make my eyes look a little bit more rounded. And just taking my next liquid liner, I am going to use this to line my top lash line. That way my false lashes can blend easily into my lashes. But while that is drying, I just took the shade and Mystic just to smoke out the edges so there were no harsh lines and everything looks very smoky and diffused. Quickly just taking the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Crybaby, I'm going to use this to tight line my bottom waterline and this is really going to open up our eyes. And this is the completed look for look number one. I love how this look turned out. It's very subtle and soft but still very smoky at the same time. I love the mix of purples and cranberries. But for lashes, I am wearing the Bedore Light from House of Lashes. And for my lip color, it is the shade Electric Feel Luxe Lipstick from Colourpop Cosmetics. First, we'll be taking the shade Hush Hush, and this is going to be our transition shade. The first couple of steps for every look is going to be fairly the same since we are limited to the amount of mattes that we have. It's going to sound a little bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, we'll be taking the shade Rockstar and this is going all over my lid space first, just really packing on the color. Then I'll slowly start blending that towards my transition shade. I love this shadow because it's like so purple. It like really leans towards a true purple and I love that. And now we'll be going in with Mystic and this is going in the same area as Rockstar but just focusing it mainly on the lid. We just want to start slowly creating that gradient. And now taking the shade Berry Treasure and this was the shade that I was talking about in the review. You can see here that I'm applying it and there is no signs of glitters. I mean like you can see one little speck of glitter. I even tried to use my finger but honestly once you go in and blend it out all the glitter is gone and it just looks like a very dark purple black shadow. Using the shade Glitz and Glam, this is going right on top of Berry Treasure. Since none of the glitters in Berry Treasure popped out, I decided to add my own with Glitz and Glam. So I'm focusing most of the product just right on the center of my lid and just blending the edges out with what is left on my brush. Using the shade Rockstar once again, I'm going to use this to smoke out my bottom lash line and I'm making sure I'm connecting it with the shadows right in that outer corner of my eye. Again, taking the shade Mystic, I'm going to use this to define my bottom lash line, just really hitting it under that waterline. Now I'm taking the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade No Shame, and I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. And that is the second look completed. I love how this one turned out as well. I love all the purple tones. It's perfect for fall, very smoky, very vampy. But for lashes, I am again wearing the Bedore Light from House of Lashes. And for my lip color, I am wearing the ColourPop Ultra Bold Lip in the shade Zuma. Taking the shade Hush Hush, once again, we're going to be using this as our transition shade. Same as always, you guys know the drill. Now I'll be taking the shade Rockstar once again, and I'm going to focus this mostly on the outer corner of my eye. And then I'll bring it towards the inner part of my crease. I'm going to take a small pencil brush and focus that color right in the inner part of my lid space too. But we're just keeping the middle of our lid space blank. Using the shade Mystic, we're doing exactly the same thing, but just using a smaller brush and focusing the product a little bit lower and in a smaller area at the same time. We just want to deepen up that part since we are creating a halo cut crease. Now I'm just taking some concealer on the back of my hand and I'm going to start cutting up my crease by stamping the concealer on right in the middle of my lid space and I'm going to bring it past my natural fold of my crease. I will then take a small definer brush and really define that crease line taking my time making sure that the curve of the cut crease is the same curve of my eye shape. So when you are cutting your crease you make sure you just want to take your time with it because you really don't want to mess up this part so just take your time and it'll be all good and now we'll be taking the shade bling bling this is going right on top of that concealer and again I did use the shade wet bling bling is a little bit more glittery of a shimmer shadow it's not as metallic there's like a lot of glitter so there is a little bit of fallout with this one even if you do use it wet Now I'm just taking the shade Gem and this is the shade that I'm going to use to blend Bling Bling into the matte. And all you got to do is just really stamp where they meet and just keep swiping left and right and that will pretty much do the trick for you.
Now I'm taking the shade Ruxta and once again going on out bottom, lash line. I feel like my lash line is like always the same so I don't really feel like I need to keep explaining it. And once again, for the last time, we are taking Mystic and we're going to use this to define that bottom waterline. I quickly then just took my Sigma Longwear Eyeliner Pencil and I just used this to tight line my bottom waterline but I was out of frame, you couldn't even see what I was doing but I'm sure you guys see me do this multiple times already. And that is the last and final look completed. Definitely a lot more dramatic than the others. Required a little bit more technique, but I love how it turned out. For lashes, I am wearing once again the Bedore Light from House of Lashes. And for my lip color, it is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Abu Dhabi. Okay guys, so this is going to wrap up my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed everything from my review to the swatches, comparisons, the demos. I hope you guys enjoyed it all and found it helpful. If you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a thumbs up for me. I would seriously appreciate it so much. Like I am literally doing so many three demo looks right now that I could use the moral support. So yeah, give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching. Also comment down below your favorite look from this video. Also let me know which palette was your favorite out of the four. Which video of mine was your favorite out of all the looks that I created. I created 12 looks for this one collection so let me know which one was your favorite in the comments down below as well. And that is everything for today's video. I want to thank you guys so so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!